Hi guys and welcome back to the channel Hell Dominance, Anthony here. Please remember to like and subscribe and also click that notification bell if you're enjoying what you're seeing and want to see more. So I'm going to come through a few little stories that have happened over the last few days in regards to Rugby League in general. Um, starting off with a North American Rugby League and two stories from their Canadian sides. So, because of the 2021 pandemic and Super League's issues uh, with expansion, uh, the Toronto Wolfpack were unceremoniously booted out of Super League um, and were not taken up to go in the RFL, whether that's with the existing people, the new people, or Super League, or whoever. Anyway, that's all gone by the wayside now. and. Toronto decided to join the North American Rugby League. Um, so, first of all, they knew the pandemic was going to cause an issue with their travels between North and South America. No, North America to America. Canada to America, let's leave it at that. Anyway, so they were set to play the Canadian Cup which was a three game series between um, Ottawa, uh, Ottawa Aces, and also um, Toronto Wolfpack. That was always going to be the case, and they're still going ahead with it, even though the uh, Eastern Conference of the NR NARL um, have followed the Western and postponed for this season. With that, um, there were some info well, some people that were upset that they weren't in the Super League anymore or playing Rugby League in the uh, European Conference, a European super, uh, Rugby League, but um, and asked for their money back. The old regime paid up some, but not them all. And so when this new regime came in, we didn't know what to expect. And as of the 9th of the 6th, 2021, on their social media, Toronto Wolfpack have confirmed the packs, the Wolfpack team, the new Wolfpack team, uh, purchased the intellectual uh, properties from the original Wolfpack comp uh, company. We did not purchase that company or its liabilities. However. We feel the right thing to do for our fans is to issue complimentary 2022 season tickets to our fans who have on who are on record that had purchased one and haven't received a, a refund from the previous from the previous company. We will provide further information via email to fans we have record of in the coming weeks. So that's great. To keep a good faith with the uh, Wolfpack fans who were turning up and buying season tickets and things like that. They're off. They're offering either complimentary or full refunds to them. Uh, to them, as goodwill gestures, as they are deserved to have the fans. They had no obligation to do that. The new new owners at the Wolfpack, and they've stepped up and said, "We want." to do this for that. Yes, they are looking at keeping fans, obviously. Keeping the merchandise going, keeping the brand going. Rugby League is in North America is having its own league as of 2022 at this, at this moment in time. So to keep all that, all the fans on side, they had to do something like that and they've obliged. It's long-term thinking. It's expansionist thinking. Do I, do I dare to say? I don't know about you people, but if there was more people in the Super League like that, maybe, just maybe, this league might not be reducing revenues and changing academy statuses and smaller TV deals, not looking further afield, not investing in the grassroots 
or are the RFL or even dare I say it other leagues so that they can expand rugby league worldwide more people watching more people playing more money incoming why doesn't anyone think of that there'll be people coming over from Holland playing games watching games people coming over from anywhere it's just an example Holland at this point because the strength of the game is not there but Super League could invest in these leagues but no the clubs have all the voting rights anyway that's my rant on Super League I just want to say well done for the Toronto Wolfpack team uh, the owners the people that are running and the PR company that are actually doing something for their fans thank you again so next we have Ottawa Aces why am I bringing up Ottawa Aces because they've popped up on Facebook and social media with this little statement hey Ottawa let us introduce you to some epic teams we could be facing in 2022 when we enter the RFL's League One. First up, we have the current league leaders, the Barrow Raiders, and they have a link on their club on their website for a full club profile. So this has basically confirmed that they are going to go for their entry to the RFL they are going to keep their franchise going for the RFL they're going to join that league there was in and hour in it through people that are uh, looking into it from the outside but Eric Perez has more than once said that he's looking to play in both leagues now this has two things going for it one they would be able to set the bar for the quality that's needed to get into the getting into rugby football league. And if they are playing a mixed A to B team, something like that, I just call it B team at this point um, because I have no other information on that, and we'll find out in due course pro uh, when it comes up to the 2022 season for Ottawa. But they could be an A team and B team, or a mix of the A team and B team playing in the NARL as well. That will be a level stick to find out how, what level the North American clubs are. When they go into League One, Ottawa, and see how well they're doing, and if they're calling up their Canadian players so that are playing in the NARL. Or the NARL are dropping, uh, sorry, the Ottawa team in the RFL are dropping players into the NARL for game time, which is beneficial. It's like a reserves grade. I don't want to say that they uh, they're using it as a reserve grade, but many of the well, the, the French clubs, as I mentioned before, are using it the exact same way with the French league. So why not take advantage of it? It will boost up the playing quality in America for Rugby League as, and it will be a drawing point. If you're playing in this league and you're playing against the B team of Ottawa and Ottawa are going great guns in A in League One or the Championship, they're more likely to look at that scouting pool in the NARL to have you playing for them in the RFL. It creates a cap the scouting pool that also includes Jamaican players as the NARL have actually confirmed that Jamaican players will be exempt from the foreign player rule. Canadian, American, Jamaican. So, it's a big pool and an entire league that Ottawa could go into to get better players. And 
they would be only on visitors because they'll be they're based over here. That's what they were saying as well. They were going to base the team over, not not over here as in over here in the UK, as in over here as in the North America, their league, as they would say. Now, if they're playing rugby league there and playing it at a decent level which is a good barometer when you're coming against the B team that are training with the A team. You could be picked up that way and playing professional, paid full time, all year round rugby league. That's looking at it long term, but what I can say is it's great that Ottawa are doing both leagues. Maybe they'll, they'll, um, they'll change the name slightly of the Ottawa team like the French teams did in um, the French Elite Leagues. Don't, don't forget, the French Elite League teams, the B-sides, are not winning that league. No, nope, they're not. Their other teams are. So the quality is a little bit step up. And they're playing in France. Or they're playing in Canada. Anyway, that's my two good stories from the Canadian side. So, our final story today is in regards to Whitehaven Rugby League Football Club. Yes, it's a League One club, so we're looking further down the Rugby Football League pyramid at this point. But it is big news. As Five directors of the Rugby Football Club have left at, by resignation. Um, six days ago it first was um, mentioned that uh, Tommy Todd, who is a very, very popular person um, at Whitehaven, um, is, and is also the chairman, has tendered his rec uh, resignation. Six, this was six days ago with the club confirming there is an ongoing situation at the recreation ground. So loverugbyleague.com um, say the sources revealed that there have been growing tensions at board level over inactions of a shareholder with concerns over alleged aggressive and abusive behaviour. So that is temperamental boardroom antics of a different kind. Actually if the sources are correct and also these, sto these, these stories are true aggressive and abusive behaviour in the ballroom mm, things are not right at Whitehaven I'm sorry to say there is reports that the manager of the club's popular marquee bar facility has also quit leaving it without a license as part and parcel of this ongoing issue this alleged incident that's a revenue stream that Whitehaven need as it is a bar rugby league drinking there are bit they drink for the revelry rather than the aggression because rugby league has all the aggression on the pitch so have a beer with it that's why you're allowed it in the stands unlike soccer which you have to have it off the stands you can't take beer with you anyway so a, st a statement issued through the club uh, there is an ongoing situation at a club involving our directors board and members of staff this situation includes the resignation of chairman Tom Todd. At this time we would like to make it clear that the board has asked him to reconsider it. Whitehaven, Whitehaven RLFC would like to reassure fans and stakeholders that the situation is currently being dealt with and we would appreciate some time from supporters and the media to rectify the situation and bring unity to the club. We will comment further on this matter in due course. 
it's reported that Toddy's a very popular character at the recreation ground and has held the post of chairman since 2015, overseeing a range of improvements off the field in recent years. That has all come to a head as um, a statement has been put out once again. We ask for a time to rectify and move forward. We'd like to reassure that Sunday's game will be going ahead as planned. This is because Whitehaven Rugby League have to, as today, the 10th of the 6th, 2021, that its chairman has officially resigned from his post and four directors have joined him. So the names of those are Todd, Todd, uh, Tom Todd, as well as Steve Nicholson, Peter Boyle, Andrew Early, Paul Shepherd, and they've all resigned with immediate effect. So they did ask him to reconsider, but unfortunately he declined. It's a tough, tough business that we're in a rugby league, but they're running a club. I'm not sure if this is because of pandemic situations, being that licensed facilities like that could only hold a certain number of people and uh, the person at the head of it is being pushed a little and then they push back. Anyway, all that I can say is good luck to Whitehaven. And that's it for another video, ladies and gentlemen. Thank you very much for watching. Please remember to like, share, subscribe uh, th this to this video and to this channel uh, so that we can get Rugby League more popular. The more popular this channel comes, the more popular you guys become because you guys will be the ones that will be putting, in a play putting into place all the actions that I want to do for Rugby League whether it's grassroots or clubs that need help. Anyway, thank you, all the best, and I'll see you in the next video.